Welcome to Red Eye. Hello everyone, I am Tom Shalou. I think Andy Levy has something to tell us. He's in the Red Eye Tease Deck. Andy? Thanks, Tom. Coming up on the big show, as I predicted, my man Donald Trump wins the 2016 <laughs> presidential election and even as we speak is getting ready to make America great again. We did it, everyone. <laughs> Plus, California and a couple other states vote to legalize recreational marijuana. That sound you hear is all of Los Angeles firing up their bongs and pretending, pretending the election never happened. <laughs> And finally, an interview with Red Eye's favorite Donald Trump impersonator, Johnny D. Domenico. Congratulations on four more years of guaranteed work. <laughs> maybe eight, maybe 12, who the hell knows? <laughs> Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Andy. Let's welcome our guests. Her smile lights up a room. It saves us a ton on electricity. Fox News headlines 24-7 reporter Carly Shimkus. It's not Montego Manny or Kokomo Carl, it's Aruba Ray. Comedian Aruba Ray Allen. He's living in his next five o'clock shadow. <laughs> it's always a beard joke. Comedian Dave Smith. And something tells me he's having a pretty good week so far. Hi, Tom. Host of the Gavin McInnes Show on the Anthony Cumia Network, Gavin McInnes. Okay, let's start the show. The 2016 election is over. Donald Trump won, as expected. That means now it's time to turn our attention to <laughs> with less than 35,000 hours to go until the 2020 election. Oh the question is, what's the field look like and what are their <clears throat> prospects for victory? For more, let's go to TV's Andy Levy over at the big electoral map to see where things stand. Andy. Thanks, Tom. Uh, in my opinion, the most important thing in 2020 is going to be the path to 270. For President Trump, that means repeating his huge 2016 upset by winning states like Pennsylvania, <laughs> Ohio, and Florida. But let's take a look at likely Democratic nominee Kanye West's path. <laughs> if he can manage to win all of the states that Hillary won, plus all of the states that Donald Trump won, he'll have 538 electoral votes, making him, in my view, the clear winner <laughs> of the 2020 election. <laughs> now, if Yeezy only manages to win, say, 49 of the states, I think he'll still win the presidency. <laughs> Right now, our polls are showing we got Pennsylvania, I believe, is too close to call. Is that right? Yeah, still too close to call. Uh, Ohio, I'm being told, also is too close to call. And Tom, I'm now being told that we can project that Florida is firmly in the who the f knows category. <laughs> Tom. Wow. Thank you, Andy. Oh, my. Uh, what do you think, uh, Gavin? Should we? I mean, it's exciting. I mean, who knows what it's going to be? Yeah. I mean, well, uh, Trump talked about that when he uh, gave his speech. He said, you know, I hope that it's going to be a good four years and maybe, and maybe eight years. I actually don't want him to run for more than two terms because winning is what? exhausting. What? It's, it's been two. <laughs> more than two terms? It's possible. Oh. Bloomberg did it. Well, yeah, but I don't think that. I mean, he did it because he. How did Bloomberg do it? He repealed his own. Yeah. Term limits. He law. gave himself a pardon. Well, I, think, I think his first start was he wasn't president. Yeah. Well, how about one and done? That would be macho for Trump. If he said one and done four years, then, you know. I don't think I can handle more than four years of winning. It's already been 48 hours of winning, and I'm exhausted. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Let's back up a bit to the 2016 election. We've been hearing for years. <laughs> There's too much money in politics. That's probably true, but not for the reason they said. It's because it doesn't work. Donald Trump just pulled off a huge win at bargain basement prices. He spent less than five bucks a vote. That's about half of what Hillary Clinton spent for her loss. But as the experts analyze Trump's win, one phrase keeps popping up, free TV time. The International Business Times asked, did the media help Donald Trump win $5 billion in free advertising given to President-elect? That number, $5 billion in free media, is according to data an analytics firm MediaQuant. But it wasn't free. Trump did and said things that got people's attention. And as for the media coverage it generated, almost all of it was negative. If you're going to call Trump's coverage free advertising, you might as well add in all of Hillary's Clinton attack ads <laughs> into Trump's free media numbers. <laughs> War chests are overrated because the ammunition that they buy, 30-second spots, don't work anymore. Trump was buried in negative coverage and negative ads, but he overcame it because no one believes either of those things anymore. Uh, Dave Smith, hmm. uh, what think you? Is it is the advertising overrated? 
The war chests. Well, you're, you know, that, that was a great point you just made there. And, and you're right, it was completely negative uh, advertising that he got from, from the media. But the, the reason why that worked is because America hates the media right now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It, it was an interesting, like, stars aligning that came up. As much as anything else, Trump's campaign was an anti-media campaign. I mean, that was probably his most consistent position. At every single rally, he would call the media the most dishonest people on the planet. He'd say, turn the cameras toward the crowd, and they wouldn't every time. They would refuse <laughs> to do it. Yes. This is a big rejection of the media. So I, I get what you're saying. You can't really call it free advertising. But the fact that they were trashing him made all of Trump supporters go, we're that much more in the tank for him. Yeah, so could it, can they copy this? Can other people, Carly, copy what Trump did? No, I, no, I don't think ever. And I think it's funny that a lot of political strategists are now kind of rethinking the whole campaign process uh, because of what Donald Trump did. Yeah. But, I mean, he's a one-of-a-kind person. And think about why Bernie Sanders was so popular. It's because people are kind of drawn to people that aren't afraid to be themselves. That's who Donald Trump is. He showed everybody exactly who he is. Hillary Clinton could never do that. And that's really one of the reasons why You're people were so drawn to him. Absolutely right. Can you imagine uh, Donald Trump's handlers telling him, I don't want you to say what you want to say. Say this instead. No one can picture it. Like, he's going to say... Well, I think they tried that. They not, try, yeah. but yeah. he doesn't listen. Now, Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, will say whatever her handlers want her to. I think you're right. It's that authenticity she that people are into. She relies on her handlers yeah. to tell her what to say. So why to write was the it, jokes. Uh, Ray, why do you think that in the, last, in the last days of the campaign, he was on message, he was reading from the teleprompter, and everyone was saying, oh, he's doing great now, he's on script. So, you know, which was it that worked for him? Well, I think it, it all worked for him. I mean, the networks were so excited to have anything Trump uh, to show. I think one, one network actually showed video of his colonoscopy, and it was the highest rated <laughs> clip that they've ever had. It was wow, a fantastic I mean, colonoscopy. Yeah, people I mean, love the polyps. Stuff. People love that stuff. Yeah. It was Very huge. healthy, very but, healthy. Yeah. I mean, Gavin. <laughs> it was huge. It's, you know, <laughs> could anyone copy this? I mean, Trump, obviously, he has a big personality, but there are other people that are good at media, right? Well, I, I, I mean, I kind of disagree uh, in the sense that I think that the whole thing has been rebooted, and now the idea of political advisors, and, and Ann Quilter talks about this and in Trump We Trust, the whole idea of going through the normal infrastructure and paying all these people piles of money to help you with your campaign are done. Study groups, all this crap, it's all done. It's done, but they're still going to get it, aren't they? Because who's going to lose? Those yeah. days are, you have to be authentic now. And, and this was the reality election. It was yeah. a reality TV star who, and what shut down Hillary? Reality. So from now on, you just tell the truth, you're honest, you're yourself, and you don't have people advising you on how to be yourself. That's what's so exciting about this victory is it's a whole reboot for America. But what about, like, Kellyanne Conway? Wasn't she a, a, a revelation? Once he brought her in, didn't she kind of clean everything up? Or are you saying you're not going to give as much credit to her? Well, uh, what is it that, oh, that, that she cleaned sexist. up? Oh, that's sexist. Now, if I make a point, it's <laughs> against women. I, yeah, she had, she had the fortitude to say, don't listen to everyone. Keep doing you, Don. Yeah, well, no, it's true. I mean, she did. No, but I do think that she, she kind of did. I think that a lot of his other advisors were saying that. And then when Kellyanne Conway came in, I think that she kind of gave him that woman's touch and finesse that he needed, similar to how Ivanka Trump was his secret weapon as well. And yeah. it's interesting that you, you bring up the uh, teleprompter thing, because he uh, makes news no matter what he does, because he established himself as this off-the-cuff person, and that's what, you know, was yeah. created the news in the beginning. And then when he finally brought out the teleprompter, it was like, oh my gosh, this is shocking. He's following a script. And then he was on the top of the news again, so yes. he couldn't lose. And he's yeah. not even really good at the teleprompter. It's just when he does it, people say, he's, oh, look, he's doing he's it. Yeah. Look, he's not, he's not, but I'm, reading off the teleprompter isn't compromising his message or being handled. I thought when he That's read true. off the teleprompter <clears> at the end, when he said, he, he goes, I'm not owned. I have no, uh, what was that? The line was, uh, my only special interest is you. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was an incredibly powerful powerful message at the end. I'm an outsider. This whole system is corrupt. We're going to cut the grass or what is it? Drain the swamp. Yeah. Yeah, cut great, the grass. Drain, drain the swamp. He's going to do all sorts of yard work. Yeah. I think all right. Right. I want to move on here. <laughs> Moving on. Drain Democrats. Want to mow the lawn? Whatever. He said that the Billy Bush is going to drain the swamp. Let's have an American mow the lawn for once. Democrats are still slightly perturbed about the election. Protesters have been jamming the streets of major cities like New York, Chicago, and Philadelphia to show their disdain for Donald Trump but it's unclear whether giving the middle finger to a skyscraper bearing his name <laughs> will do anything to change Tuesday's results. Rallies may not be enough. We can't just do rallies. We have to fight back. There will be casualties on both sides. 
There will be because people have to die to make a change in this yeah. world. What? what? Wow. People have to die. I guess uh, that's one way to think about it. <laughs> Not all liberals had such extreme reactions. Some took the election results in stride. This has to be a joke. I cannot believe this is happening. I'm literally about to kill myself and I'm not kidding. You better fix this shit right now. I literally am going to die. I need an ambulance. I can't believe <laughs> Wow, and that was her OK Cupid site. That was her. Uh, that was her profile. Uh, but are liberals overreacting? Trump is turning out to be a fairly boring president so far. This was a meeting that was going to last for maybe ten or fifteen minutes, and uh, we were just going to get to know each other. We had never met each other. Uh, I have great respect. Uh, the meeting lasted for almost an hour and a half. And it could have, as far as I'm concerned, it could, could have gone on for a lot longer. Trump's changed already. Gavin, uh, why can't they turn off the shutter sound on their iPhones in that room? Yeah, <laughs> really no. So 1920s with the flash bulbs. <laughs> You're a bum, Wally. <laughs> well, look, he's he's stepping up, right? I think I I thought the the uh, press conference was great. I mean, he had the meeting, and then they went out to the press, and I thought President Obama was kind of cool too. Yeah. I, I don't like admitting that, yeah. but he's been pretty noble about the whole thing and did a pretty good speech about uh, Trump winning. Yeah, and he said, you know, that's it, Aww. democracy, it's time to turn over the reins, peaceful transfer of power, all that kind of stuff. I like the way it's working out in the higher echelons of government, but I think these people in the streets are kind of goofy. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree. Well, I never thought I would hear Gavin praise Obama like that. Yeah, that why do I get incredible. the boring question? Now Very, I have to praise Obama? Big Obama supporter over here. Liberals. I was never a fan, but he was a big supporter. Anyway, um, I, yeah, the, 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 the people, <laughs> you know what's so fascinating about this election? It's like all the narratives that they tried to pin on Trump yeah. turned around on them. So at first they go, you better pledge to support whoever the nominee is, because that obviously won't be you. Yes. And now it's like, oh, you idiots, you all pledge to support Donald Trump. And then they make this whole thing about how, well, he won't peacefully give over power. His his people won't respect the results of the election, and now that's all turned around on the Democrats because it's all on them. It's on them to turn over power and, and respect that Trump beat them. Isn't that ironic, Ray? They're in the streets. They say, you know, he's not my president, but do you remember there, there was only I mean, a few people who said that about President Obama, and they tried to run him out of town, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they did. I mean, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's the bizarro uh, election, you know, it's, everything sort of, sort of flipped, and now everyone's upset. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of people are upset not only because they feel like Trump is sort of shady and divisive, but also because they wanted to have uh, the first female president. That's also a big factor. It's not just, we don't like that guy, but we didn't get that, that woman. That's, what, what, I think for a lot of people. They, they really, they, they were that uh, tied to Hillary or just that they wanted a woman? Uh, I think there were both. There's both. Some people were very tied to Hillary, and yeah. other people were sobbing because they wanted to see. Look, I think it would have been nice if my mother in her lifetime could have seen a female president. Yeah. Whether or not it should have been this one, whether or not it should have been this one, I don't know. Well, think about it. my my mom and maybe yours. I don't know about your mom, but they came from a time where you had to get permission from your husband to get certain jobs. Get a credit card, yes. get a so that would be nice. However, I'm not saying that. This is the woman who maybe should have and, been the, and, the president. And yet he spends so much time in Aruba where they don't have a lot of respect for yeah, women down the, there. Yeah, the implication <laughs> there is that we live in this sexist society. The reason there's been no women presidents is because there hasn't been a qualified woman. It's a very male job, by the way. Oh, <laughs> it is. Well, I also, I do, I, I kind of agree with Gavin in the wow. sense where we always look back at, you go, oh, this time when women weren't allowed to vote. And you're like, yeah, it, w it was just a sweet cakewalk oh, for men utopia? with their, their factory work and getting drafted to fight wars. You yeah, know? Like, yeah there, that's there, what there I mean. Gender roles that oppressed men. I don't think women had have had the chance yet, but I, I, I agree with you in that you have to vote for the right woman, and Hillary Clinton certainly is not that. Uh, but one of the reasons why the polls were so off is because Trump's people who voted for Trump didn't want to tell anybody that they yeah. were going to vote for Donald Trump, uh, and it's because they didn't want to face the left backlash, the party that's supposed to be so inclusive. So sure, protest, protest all you want, but burning the American flag, beating people up is total garbage and completely against what they preach themselves, which is beyond hypocritical. And, and by the way, if you're going to light a flag on fire, it's polyester. It's very easy. Get some gas on it and hit it with a spark. How many times have you seen a video of someone going, <laughs> they can't get it lit. Not, in the heat of the moment. Right. And These kids don't even know how to start fire, fire in your life. They never There's have. a problem with single easy. parent it's households. It's called lighter fluid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's they're so bad at it. Understood. Okay, more reaction from the left. After Trump 
was elected, Aaron Sorkin wrote a personal letter to his daughter <laughs> and her mother. Oh, and also Vanity Fair. <laughs> Here's part of it published on Vanity Fair's website. Sorkin Girls. Well, the world changed last night in a way I couldn't protect us from. That's a terrible feeling for a father. I won't sugarcoat it. This is truly horrible. And it wasn't just Donald Trump who won last night. It was his supporters, too. The Klan won last night. White nationalists, sexists, racists, buffoons, Gavin. We've embarrassed, <laughs> we've embarrassed ourselves in front of our children and the world. Here's what we'll do. We'll fight. Yeah. Roxy, there's a time for this language, this kind of language, and it's now. And on and on he went. Sorkin wasn't the only one writing letters. John Podhoritz, Red Eye Guest, and a Dever Trumper also wrote one to his daughters. It's very powerful. Let's take a look. Dear daughters, Trump won. Signed, Daddy. P.S. You'll live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gavin, yeah. Yeah, I feel like he was speaking directly to you, don't you? Yeah. Um, Aaron Sorkin, what do you think he, he needs to, you know, he needs to communicate with his, his kids, right? I feel like I could beat him up while I was on the phone. <laughs> like I could say, where are you guys right now? Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> what, yeah, hold why on, are I'm beating the crap out of Aaron Sorkin. Uh, I can't hear you. Will you stop screaming? <laughs> uh, you know the irony of this, and everything about this election is drenched in allegory. He is making up this ridiculous narrative of the clan one, Columb, Columb, yeah, Columb, yeah. yay! And you go, dummy, <laughs> that's why Trump won. Because we are so sick of this narrative of the America is the clan and the bad men are everywhere and America's sex is homophobic and Islamophobic and blah, 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 blah. We're all so sick of it that we said, no, we're not doing this anymore. Your unicorn hell verse doesn't exist. Huh. You're gone. And they go, well, that's and they keep going with it. Well, afterwards. this is you're right. It's like it's like yeah, the Klan voted for Trump. Okay, that explains twelve votes. <laughs> now tell me, <laughs> yeah. now tell me the rest of them. Hitler I mean, are you really telling paper. me that all these counties that went for Obama that flipped to Trump that these they were Klansmen who were supporting Obama? I guess these were really racist people who just became racist in the last four years. It's well, just he, really boring more than anything. But why didn't Sorkin learn from when, you know, when Hillary said the deplorables thing, mm -hmm. she came out and apologized and they all said, oh, she shouldn't have said that or whatever. But Sorkin's kind of sticking with that, that he the thinks yes, that, that the deplorable, deplorable people won this election. You know what? I, I never like to say anything yeah. nice about anyone on the left because they're all a bunch of idiots. But uh, <laughs> the Bernie people I think are much more, uh, ha have an actual insight into this than the Hillary people. I think you talk to Hillary people, it's like, why did she lose? Racism, sexism, that's all they've got. Yeah. Bernie Sanders supporters seem to understand, they go, no, we just came off the worst recession since the Great Depression. There's a completely <laughs> phony recovery that everyone's praising, and these people haven't gotten anything back, and they wanted something new. And it has nothing to do with racism. Bernie supporters are just like robots where their calculator function is broken, but they're still good robots. Yes. I need a minute I get with that it. one. I do. I get that. I mean, why didn't you just leave a note? Write it on the blackboard like I do. I thought it was very sweet that Aaron Sorkin wrote the letter. And, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but Donald Trump uh, wrote a letter to Ivanka years ago when she was a kid, and it was published in Penthouse Forum. <laughs> <laughs> no, that isn't true. That's true. Carly, uh, you know, I don't know why he has to write uh, write these letters. Yeah. It, was he home? I mean, does he still well, live there, or are they divorced? I'm assuming, I guess they're... That's why you have to write letters to your kids, right? No, I, was, I, I, I was assuming that he... Th that he was I there? I thought about that. How could someone successful in Hollywood not be divorced? I don't, have, I I don't know. That I don't want together, to assume. I, I think Tom to Hanks is the only one. So I, I'm going to say something unpopular, and uh -huh. then maybe follow it up with something a little bit more popular. Uh, the reason... If Donald Trump wants to have a successful presidency, he's going to have to tone down... Oh, here we go! I know, but it's true. <laughs> so Are you cool. telling me a successful president sorry, can't just grab women by the... <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> He's going to have to tone down the speech that led Sorkin to write uh -huh. this letter. Okay. And it's the late night tweeting and the name calling and kind of take the high road every once in a while. Why? Uh, we tried the high road for you know a quarter what? Because century. Because now he's the president for down. all people. I think he will. So? I think he did all that stuff to to get to win. If he had if he had behaved polite the way he spoke at his victory speech, if he had behaved that way throughout the election, he never would have won. I think so too. Ever. Well, That's well, true. That okay, we got to go. We'll come back and talk about more stuff. More states legalize marijuana. I'll give you the straight dope after the break. Uh, uh. Election night was a mixed bag for Snoop Dogg. The rapper and actor posted a series of tweets lamenting Donald Trump's ascendancy to the White House. Snoop also suggested he was moving to Toronto, 
asking rapper and real estate agent Drake for a hookup on some property. But there was a silver lining for Snoop. Marijuana is now legal in California. He tweeted, I'll smoke to that. Uh huh. And I, by smoke, I think he means marijuana. <laughs> but it wasn't just California voting to make America baked again. On Tuesday, Maine, Massachusetts, and North Dakota also voted to legalize pot, seen here, for recreational use. And Florida voted to legalize it for medical use, for disorders like PTSD, HIV, and cancer. Uh, Carly, is this good for America? More pot? I think so. I'm, I'm pro legalization of pot. I see some surprised faces on the panel. You're high as a kite right now. What are you <laughs> sure, talking about? Sure I am. Uh, no, is pro legalization. Do you mean, do you like what they're doing, kind of uh, putting their foot in the water with legal for this or that? Yeah. I mean, if people should have it for, um, you know, f for cancer see or PTSD, works. why not for, uh, you know, a, a sl you know, just well, for I believe, boredom? I, be <laughs> I believe Florida's uh, legalization in terms of medical use is pretty broad. Like, doctors can just uh, prescribe it for things uh, that they see fit, even if it's not HIV, cancer, or PTSD. Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, like you said, dipping your foot in the water. But if I guess if Donald Trump wants to become popular with the millennials, he could just legalize pot nationally. That could be one way to do things. Is it that popular? Gavin, tell me what's going on with the drugs now. I, I don't, is pot Dude, popular? The pot is insane. What, what, what do you mean, the pot itself? You can't handle the truth. I mean, it's funny that they started out this thing with a pretty reasonable debate. And I want it legal, don't get me wrong. Yes. But it is green acid. And by the time they pass this through from <clears throat> coast to coast, people are just going to be able to eat it and time travel. It's like, it's too intense. You have to take off your shirt and lie in a cement floor if you don't want to call 911. Okay. <laughs> can, I, Wait, can I please just defend pot for a little bit? Yeah. You don't have to do any of that when you smoke pot, okay? Get, if just you're going to smoke it, go like weed. this. And then run. Right. Well, maybe are you sure you're not smoking crack? <laughs> like, are you gonna? Oh, <laughs> crack is nothing. Look, crack's for but kids. I think now. Gavin might, if he, if he, if he uh, uh, tried this this weed, maybe he's right that they out there on the streets they might have some of the strong stuff. Okay, so listen, <laughs> forget you, you, you asked the question. Blunt. Can I? Yeah. I, someone bring me one right now on Fox. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. You'll complete right a blunt. Listen. You'll finish a blunt. No, I don't smoke a blunt by myself, but oh, okay. I'm also not Biggie Smalls. Listen, the <laughs> point, all right, here's the thing. It's not a question of whether you want uh, more weed or whether you think kids should be uh, sell, uh, smoking weed. If you are willing or support throwing someone in a cage for smoking pot, That's you're, a jail you're cell, you evil. Mean. You're <laughs> evil, yeah. and you're supporting an evil policy. Who owns your body? Okay. You okay, do. But let's you recognize you that marijuana is presently a spacecraft. No, it's you not. You leave on Earth. It's Dude, come on. You, you drink whiskey? Do you know how people yeah, get on whiskey? You, you, at least you're on Earth when you have a drink. Uh, Ray, I would say that Dave is Biggie Smalls. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> I think he's Biggie, Tupac, Kanye, DMX, all rolled wow. into one. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks. Oh, and you yeah. even added the role reference. Yes, for sure. Whoa. Okay. We got to go, but should we legalize it, Ray? Yeah, I think we should. And why not generate some tax revenue, uh, mellow some people out? Look, in North Dakota, they legalize it. There's nothing to do in North Dakota. Give them some weed. Oh. Why not? <laughs> okay. it's it's I think, it's you know, good. I've been out there. I think it's fantastic. Okay, coming up. <laughs> Ready or not, halftime with TV's Andy Levy when we return. Have you? Welcome back. It's time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Hey, Andy. Hey, Tom. How are you? Good. Excellent. Uh, Trump spent five bucks per vote. Gavin, you said you don't think Trump should run for more than two terms. That's correct. <laughs> Finally, we agree on something. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. I, do, I kind of feel like this was an election of if onlys, like if only the Democrats had nominated an unethical, amoral candidate. But mainly I can't help but think if only the celebrities had done more. <laughs> yeah. 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 What a difference that could have made. <laughs> they should have done a song like Band-Aid or this something. This is what I'm saying. I mean, if Lena Dunham had done maybe two or three rap songs, <laughs> yeah. we could be looking at a totally different <laughs> thing here. Uh, Dave, you said the negative advertising, quote-unquote, that Trump got from the media worked for him because everyone hates the media. Uh -huh. A quick fact check of that statement shows you are correct. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah. Not you, though. Just the rest of them. No, no, no. I know. Yeah. I'm not the media. <laughs> no, you called Trump all along. Yeah. I, I've been saying this for like eight years now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Carly, you said Trump is a one-of-a-kind person that nobody else could really run the kind of advertising-free campaign he did and, and depend on media support. What about like an Oprah? Oprah, uh, 
She, that could be a good example, although she's not very good at Twitter. Right, what about Kanye? Kanye, everybody hates Kanye. <laughs> All right. I'm, I don't think everyone hates Kanye. Uh, a lot of people hate Kanye. <laughs> oh, Kim Kardashian's probably more popular than Kanye West. Scott Baio. Hey, this, <laughs> this election proved that Scott Baio is more popular than Beyonce. Chachi's huge. Yeah. yeah. Chachi is huge. Joni loves him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Aruba Ray, you said some network actually showed video of Trump's colonoscopy. Yeah. I believe that was Katie Couric's colonoscopy. Oh, I got their... <laughs> yeah. I got their... They do look very <laughs> similar. Though. Very, very similar colons. From what ah. I, from what well, I when I was in the locker room with both of them, I couldn't uh, figure out who was who. <laughs> sure. Uh, Carly, you said when Kellyanne Conway came in, she gave Trump that woman's touch. Yes. And you didn't even have to ask. When you're a star, they just do it. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> it's true. I should have I used a different word. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Yeah. Walked into that one. Yep. Uh, by the way, back on my celebrity thing, uh, some celebrities, Pat Oswalt, Guillermo del Toro, some others, they're tweeting a link to a change.org petition calling on the electors from the Electoral College to, quote, ignore their state's votes and cast their ballots for Secretary Clinton. So that's where we are now. Mm -hmm. Wow, great. Yeah. Over 1.3 million people have signed that petition oh my God. as of this table. Uh, I did this, whatever, the Reuters article that we pinned this, the $5 story on, I have to say this because it had maybe the best typo I've ever seen. I just... <laughs> I have to read this. Uh, Trump has also frequently dominated news cycles with provocative rhetoric that breaks taboos, including unabashed insults targeting women he dislikes over Twitter, or unusual policy prescriptions like his call to temporarily bang Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> temporarily. It's the best typo, I think, in the history of the world. <laughs> uh, the protest stuff. Uh, Tom, when, when Trump said his meeting with Obama lasted an hour and a half and it could have got longer, you showed that clip? Yeah. You cut off the part where Obama then goes, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aruba Ray, you are absolutely correct in saying that some people wanted a first woman president while others were tied to Hillary. I would put Bill in that second category. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Andy Levy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. uh, Aaron Sorkin's letter to his daughter. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. I believe Aaron Sorkin wrote that letter because it didn't repeat the same dialogue over and over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I say I am a huge Aaron Sorkin fan, by the way. But I had to say that. Uh, Gavin, you said Sorkin was making up stuff like saying the Klan won too. Yeah, sure. But the Klan's newspaper, The Crusader, did support, though not endorse Trump. Which yes, I think, but I think that's clearly what the subtext to. there is that this is a clan America, right? And it's just such a tired trope. Agreed. And it's the Absolutely. whole: all dogs are mammals, all cats are mammals, all dogs are not cats. These guys are stuck in eighth grade. Yeah. No, I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, Dave, you were getting at something I think that not enough people are talking about: the Obama voters who voted for Trump. I would love to see a numerical breakdown of that because I suspect. There's a fair amount of them. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, a lot of the, the swing counties or whatever within these states, they were saying went for Obama, that went for Trump. I mean, that's like, it, it's like liberals' heads exploding yeah. when they see that happen because yeah. no, they can't understand how that would make sense. No, so they don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Also, Dave, there is absolutely no doubt that Sanders supporters understand why Hillary lost more than Hillary supporters do. That's why they weren't Hillary supporters. <laughs> All right, maybe that's a fair point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom Sorkin is indeed divorced. Okay, so that's why he has to write letters. Knew yes, it. Exactly. Knew it. Yes. And I don't know, maybe they're not talking, and that's why he has to publish them in Vanity Fair. <laughs> exactly. I, I thought it was a cute little thing. Now it just seems so sad. Don't they love telling us about ethics and love, these mm. divorced people? <laughs> he gave his daughter a subscription to Vanity Fair and yeah. then puts letters. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually pretty genius. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, the weed watershed election. Gavin, you said pot is so strong now you have to take off your floor and lie, take off your shirt and lie on a cement floor, or you'll be calling nine one one. Yes, I mean sure, but I, like I don't need pot for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life, man. It is way stronger than acid. I remember we would right? do acid in in the eighties as teenagers, and you could still go to a concert and figure out how to pay for the bus. Pot today. <laughs> good luck getting on a bus. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the slogan yeah, for the yeah, yeah, Best of luck to you, sir. <laughs> yeah. But that's how they should rate it. <laughs> like <in terms> of <laughs> yeah. How likely you're able to get on a bus. I picked up my parents from the airport on acid once. It was very hard, but I did it. <laughs> Hot today? I don't know if I can say the word airport. <laughs> Are you sure those were your parents? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dave, you said if you're willing to throw people into a cage for smoking weed, you're evil. Yep. Yeah, the problem here is the same that it's always been, regardless of the state's thing. Selling or using pot is still illegal under our dumbass federal law, 
Do you see that changing under Attorney General Giuliani or whatever <laughs> nitwit they appoint to be the head of the DEA? I think Rudy Giuliani's plan for the Middle East is stop and frisk, so I don't think he's going to do any better <laughs> with us. No, it's going to go in the wrong way, and yeah. it's terrible, and people are making billions of dollars off it, so it's not going to change. No, absolutely. Uh, and just lastly, Aruba Ray, uh, I will end by giving you an opportunity to apologize to the fine people of North Dakota for saying there's nothing to do there. I am so very <laughs> sorry <laughs> to all the fans of Bismarck. <laughs> And I welcome you to come down to Aruba <laughs> so you can enjoy the sands that are only rivaled by those of North Dakota. <laughs> Did you give yourself the nickname Aruba Ray? No, it was uh, okay. given to me by uh, the fine people of Aruba. Okay, good, because you can't give yourself a nickname. <laughs> no, you can't. All right, I'm done. Thank you, Andy. Coming up, get to meet the man behind the hair, our Trump impersonator, John D. Domenico, in the studio to discuss his craft. Over the past year, we've had the pleasure of having the best Trump impersonator in the business join us in the studio and on the phone. Let's take a look at some highlights. Would you say Iowa is your favorite state in the union? Uh, that's that's a tough one. That's like asking me my favorite wife. You know, <laughs> that's a very difficult question. I hear that your kids can't vote for you because uh, they didn't register for the New York primary in time. Yes, that that is true. Ivanka won't be voting for me. And, and I have to tell you, Tom, it's a shame because I, I, I have to say, I voted for her every year to be Trump Magazine's sexiest woman alive. <laughs> <laughs> Rand Paul comes at you pretty hard, right? What do you think of that? He does. You know, you know, Rand Paul is such a tool. Ben Carson tried to use him to kill his mother. If I do not win the nomination, I will make America riot again. And these are going to be, the, I have to tell you, these will make the L.A. riots look like crowded bus football. <laughs> I'm very masculine, manly, very attractive hands. Mm -hmm. And I use them, if you know what I mean. I, I don't know what you mean, sir. What do you mean? I doubt that. I use them in conversation. <laughs> Jo joining us now, the performer oh beneath God. the wig, John D. Domenico. Uh, Johnny, you're laughing at the uh, the bits. Do you remember these? <laughs> yes, I remember them. <laughs> this has been a great year. This all these appearances have been fantastic. Now, uh, has your fee? Have you doubled your fee? Tripled your fee? Oh, I've quadrupled the fee. Yeah, exactly. It's it's gone through the roof, Tom. It's really just tremendously much higher than it was before. <laughs> now, presidential now. Well, I take credit on Red Eye, but I mean, have we yeah. done? Have we done? Uh, you know, raised your profile here on oh, the show? Oh, you did. I think I think being on this show is what got me on Conan. <laughs> you know? That's, oh, it's a very stepping stone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and because of this and the Trump cast and, and so many other, because, you know, you provided me with this, you know, this great platform and the, the kind of got me out there early on because you were the, I mean, you were the first one. There uh, we go. More than a year, more than a year ago. Always a you first know, here on yeah. Red Eye. Uh, on Trump, <laughs> the pundits missed it. We've had guests in here all year mm -hmm. laughing mm -hmm. at Trump saying he has no chance. Uh, did you miss it? Oh no! I was on I was on Channel Four in Britain, uh, and we were right in front of the White House. And they asked me, "Well, tr uh, who do you think will win?" I said, "Trump." And I said, "He'll win in a landslide." Now, why? Why did you think? Because I've been on the road for a year, performing in, in front of audiences anywhere from you know five hundred to five thousand people, doing events, and I. I would I do this bit where I say, okay, who wants to ruin the country <laughs> and vote for crooked Hillary Clinton? And be like. <laughs> Yeah. And then I'd say, okay, okay, great. Okay, nobody. Fantastic. Who wants to vote for me to make America great again? And overwhelmingly, it was always for Trump. And people would say, well, they're, they're, Trump, they're Trump audiences. No, no, they're not. They're corporate audiences around the country, and sometimes they're public audiences. And it was always overwhelmingly Trump. And I spotted that trend a while ago and also you know, met people in hotels and would do photo ops afterwards, and they would lean into me and say, I'm voting for you. <laughs> <laughs> For you, they are saying it yeah. to the impersonator. Yeah, and I, would say, and I would say, you realize I'm not him. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but you know, they were they were just so excited. One of the things about Trump, I think a lot of people miss this. They're really excited about him. Even for me as an impersonator, they were like, you know what I mean? We, like Elvis. We, yeah, they, 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 we we love you. Yeah, we and they just want to tell somebody about it. So you tell this. Am I, am I almost like a conduit to him? Which I'm, you know, which I'm not. But that's what it was like. And I would people would tell me things, and you know, you got a lot crooked Hillary up and you 
got to you got to win this, and it was it was it was fascinating. But I spotted this a while back, and I was like, there's no way this is just. This is coincidence. This is really. This is like a trend. Have you done any gigs since the election? Yes, I did too. Any sensitivity at all now? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Th today's audience this morning in Atlantic City was trial lawyers, which was probably not the best audience I could have been in front of at any time. But I did this group last year, and I killed. And this morning, not so much. No, <laughs> not so much. It's a little rough. Sensitive. They it might take some time. Yeah. They haven't yeah. come to grips. Uh, a yeah. little trivia. People don't realize we started together in 1992. Yep. And I have this on my bookshelf at home. Do we have the picture of the uh, play? We started in an off Broadway, off off Broadway. Off off Broadway show. Babes and Brides. Let's look inside the cover. The original cast. See that? Alan Thomas Chalou, John D. Domenico, and look at Ellen. Julie Bowen. Julie from Bowen. Modern Family. Yes. Yeah. That was a. Uh, a, there she is. Look at it. Now, how, why is she held up so well? And, and you and I... <laughs> I'm, just because I'm, I'm looking at myself thinking, I look like Uncle Fester. What happened to me? <laughs> I had hair at one point. Have you been doing any uh, uh, Joe Pantoliano? Any, uh? <laughs> There's such a big coffee. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Johnny D. Oh. Coming up, the Toy Hall of Fame has announced this year's inductees. Congratulations, Milky the Marvelous Milking Cow. <laughs> The National Toy Hall of Fame has announced this year's inductees, and once again, the daddy saddle didn't make the cut. Maybe next year. Oh the toys. Gosh. <laughs> it's not a real thing. It's a real thing. Oh. The toys that will be honored are Fisher Price's Little People, The Swing, and Dungeons and Dragons. Hmm. Among the toys that were nominated but didn't make the final cut, Care Bears, Transformers, Clue, Coloring Books, and Bubble Wrap. <laughs> when I was a kid, all we needed to keep us happy all day was the swing wing. It's a fun wing. It's a swing wing. It's a what? It's a swing wing. It's a wing wing. A brand new train with the fun wing. It's a what? It's a swing wing. It's a swing wing. Elephants love the swing wing, Gavin. <laughs> the swing wing is, the first hour is really fun, yeah. and then after maybe six months, you go, now I'm really getting this. Yeah, but you have to, you have to understand the swing wing in historical context, okay? Yes. There was still lead in the paint back then. <laughs> so, like, it's, it makes sense. I, I, would, I remember, I'm old enough to remember the swing wing, and you saw people who only were using it for a few years, and you'd go, <laughs> <laughs> You know, you want people who can write their names with the swing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it takes like oh, right. seven years to get. They got really the uh, the, the elephants there to, to collect all the vomit. No <laughs> yeah. It did get you a little bit. Although young people don't get as sick as if if I swing wing now, it's a it's a terrible day. But Ray, what uh, what do you think of the? Do you think the swing itself? The swing was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I don't know if that's a toy. Nor does, is Dungeons and Dragons a toy. Uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is a board game, not a toy. The it's swing. Not a toy. It's not really a board game either. No Dungeons and Dragons? Did you ever play? There's no board. I never played. Isn't it. It's like a just devil's use toy? some dice in your imagination. <laughs> oh, I thought there was a board with dice. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I feel embarrassed. No board. I owe now. I owe the Dungeons and Dragons and North Dakota apologies. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no, but the swing. Um, I don't really know if that. I guess. Well, is it a toy? It's an activity. It. Uh, it. I yeah. did a lot of swinging in my childhood. It is a great invention, yeah. and to this day, in our high-tech world, it's still nothing like taking the young kids out uh, on yeah. a swing. I'll right? give it to the swing. I'm surprised it wasn't already inducted. Bubble wrap is the most fun thing on that list, it, You know what? Yeah. It's for, great. For adults and kids alike. Because it wasn't meant as a toy, but it is a toy. And, uh, but then, uh, under that thought process, leaves also fun to yeah. crunch. Hey. Then a leaf could Carly, be a toy. why don't what you the nominate them next year? Here? Yeah. <laughs> Things that are fun? What, are Fridays a cool toy now? <laughs> yeah, how poor were you guys when you grew up that you didn't have better toys than bubble wrap? No, bubble wrap and toys? You, we, we how about at the Toy Hall of Fame leaving. you induct some toys? Very special thanks to my entire panel, everybody.